garrisons. You've been doing them wrong. I'm going to show you the templates you should be making, depending on the nature you play as, to show you the best garrison template that is possible. Well, this is a regular circumstance, right? Isn't it? Germany annexing Poland. Whoa, I bet this never happens in a normal Hoi 4 game, right? But you can see is all of this territory, when I press F6, is showing resistance in these regions. And if you click on the individual region, you can see the garrison law, which is here, military governor, and the division template that is being used. And it is not one division being used here. It's actually 0 0.93. So it's proportional based on how much manpower and how, how much equipment is needed, specifically in that region, to maintain the uh, military governor occupation law. So remember, the way the game works is when resistance goes up higher, it doesn't put more of the division into this region. It only gives the, the mount needed to maintain this occupation law. Does that make sense? That's the reason why the numbers are proportional. So that's the reason why when you make a division in here, and let's say you make it like with a single horse, it doesn't matter on the size of the width of the division under one circumstance, which we'll come back to that circumstance a little bit later. But there we start from the very beginning and show you the default template that everyone should be making in Hearts of Iron 4, which is the single two-width horse. Remember, the proportions of this division do not matter. The width that does not matter. The only stats that matter for this division is suppression, hardness, and the cost. They're the only three stats that matter as a part of a garrison. Now, there might be some other ones I might have forgotten about, but they're the three main ones. To put it simply, when resistance goes up, less of this division is needed to maintain the occupation law. So that's the reason why when you go for armored cars, which has a 2.5 suppression, it basically means you need less of that equipment as a part of this division to maintain the occupation law. So what you tend to find is, depending on the cost of the armored car, which does vary compared to a horse, you may use less overall production cost to maintain the occupation law. I say but there a lot, because before with a horse, you only need infantry equipment. But with an armored car, you need infantry equipment as well as armored cars. Hang on a second, you don't even need infantry equipment. I'm learning something new here. A single armored car only uses armored cars. They have no guns? What? Where a single armored car only uses armored cars. Well, my mind has just blown there, guys. Because I've just learned something new. Wow. So for some reason, armored cars don't come with guns. They all fight with their fists, I presume. Or they run people over in their armored cars. Well, you go. I didn't know that. I think the way they've changed this is to try and make armored cars more favorable for uh, occupation. Now, there's an additional thing that armored cars do that cavalry don't do. And that is they have 70% hardness. That's amazing. So what it means is this will take 70% less damage from partisan activity in these regions. Because the hardness denies... Because Think about it in a way. Partisans don't have access to armor-piercing weapons. And they might have access to some of them. But they're going to basically be using Molotov cocktails and improvised explosive devices. They're going to be significantly less likely to use those advanced armor piercing weapons hence the reason why this is so effective so this is model number two single armored car first one was the horse single horse the second one is the armored car you know i never played around with this one to know how effective it is the, the downside to this one is you're making a, a piece of equipment that you don't really use that other than anything else because remember infantry equipment is used for all of the battalions you know where armored cars are something you just make just for the purpose of resistance purposes but overall, it has high suppression, so you use less of it proportional per division. And overall, it has hardness, which is great. All right, what's the third one? The third one is the single light tank. Now, light tanks have a hardness of 80%. So it's an 80% reduction amount of damage the light tank will sustain when used as a part of an occupation division. The big, however, with this one, the price is going to vary depending on the model of light tank that you make. So the meta is this. You go into your tank designer, you find yourself the oldest and crappiest light tank that you've got, which is the interwar light tank chassis. Uh, you put on it the cheapest possible gun, which I believe the cheapest one is the heavy machine gun, which is zero five production cost. Keep the cost down with rivered armor. You can also add on easy maintenance to get the cost down by another 5%, because that's added on for free. And overall, I think that's pretty much everything. It doesn't matter whether you've got diesel or gasoline. Reliability doesn't play a factor and speed doesn't play a factor in its effectiveness as a garrison. But overall, this is the cheapest possible you can get, a 2.25 per tank. Now, just be aware though, a single battalion varies. So a single battalion of armored cars is 60 armored cars. 
but a single battalion of light tank is also 60. So potentially, if you were to make the cost cheap enough, you can make it overall more effective than a light tank. It's difficult because Paradox are aware of this light tank exploit for Garrison. They're aware of it. So of course they've made light tanks more, so they've made out armored cars more favorably to try and contest that strategy. So 2.25 is the cost for this resistance light tank where a single armored car, I just realized as well, the armored car that I selected was the more advanced one because I researched all technology. So the hardness on this division is 70%, which is the max amount compared to the early one, which is 65%. The difference isn't that massive to be fair but the cheapest armored car is for production cost so you can see there's a significant discount there i suppose we could show a like for like comparison if i was to change the occupation law here so we'll stick with the uh, military governor we'll specifically create two templates here one for a or armored car a horse and also a armored car so yeah one of each so these are basically one of each one 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 I suppose now we can see the actual real world example of how much production it even needs. So we change to the horse and click on equipment details here. You can see that it's using 67 equipment, sorry, 67 manpower for the horse. And it's using 8,100 infantry equipment. We can't see that amount proportional based on production cost though. So it's a little bit hazy how to do a light for light comparison with this one. Anyway, we move on to the light tank. The light tank uses significantly less manpower, surprisingly, 27k. And then we'll change on to the armored car. And the armored car is using the exact same amount of manpower. We'll do ALE here and just spawn in some equipment just to make sure these numbers are accurate. So you go 27 manpower is required and 3.2 light tanks, 3.2. Change that to the armored car. Still 27k manpower, 3.24 armored cars oh it's still 3.24 for the light tank these numbers aren't working the way i thought they were going to work so it does look like the light tank meta is still a thing but overall if you're looking to save manpower it just looks like it's more effective so let's just double check it then light tank recon is 2.5 suppression that's why the numbers are the same oh so here we go guys suppression makes a massive factor overall because suppression is reducing the amount needed to keep the area suppressed as a part of the governor's occupation law so this all makes sense now I was under the understanding that armored cars had more suppression. Why do they have the same amount? That's really weird. Medium tanks and heavy tanks also have 2.5 suppression, but be aware with the extra hardness that you get, it isn't worth it in the long run because the production cost per tank is too high. So we'll show an example here. We will have a single battalion of heavy tank. Then we change that to the heavy tank. Because the suppression is the same, we only need 20... 7,000 manpower and overall that's the same amount of equipment we would have needed anyway but once again the cheapest that you can make a uh, heavy tank cheapest heavy tank is still significantly more expensive than the light tank hence reason why light tanks are superior in this scenario even though they have overall more hardness yeah, i can get down to nine production costs versus the 2.25 production cost for a light tank so it is overall in the long run better and i think as well it's capped at 90 percent hardness as well so having like a, a super heavy tank as a garrison might sound advantageous because it's got 100 percent hardness i don't even think you can have a battalion of super heavy tanks anymore i think it's only a support company well anyway regardless of that, it's capped at 90 percent in my understanding also another thing as well is you can have cast armor on cast armor gives an extra two percent hardness so you could start that that hardness even higher if you wanted to but there is a massive downside to the cost for that on a light tank the cost would be going from 2.25 to 3.45 and it would be less effective over the long run just for that two percent hey listen if you're looking to mid max all the numbers here that might be advantageous but it's just an option so let's just cover this again so this is what you always start off with i mean it's the cheapest overall however it's not the most manpower effective but it's the cheapest to put production into you already have infantry equipment anyway because you're going to be making that for your infantry and your army anyway this seems to be the matter light tank uh, you've got high hardness it's got the same suppression as an armored car overall from what we've seen from these numbers so far a single weakest crappiest light tank is probably the best you can end the game i would imagine though as germany you're gonna need at least 
10 mils from the very start of the game on light tank to have enough to maintain the resistance because you are going to need a significant amount of light tanks let's have a look how many you do need for this so 2,000 tanks that's a lot of tanks you know yeah 3,000 no I was totally wrong 3,000 tanks you actually need 3,240 that's a lot of light tanks so you do need to build a big stockpile up to make this worthwhile however it is the better for resistance in the long run some other things to note this guy damage to garrison is minus 25 percent so it just means partisan activity is reduced in its effectiveness by 25 percent that doesn't mean resistance is going to go down it just means the amount of damage that partisans can project onto divisions and garrisons is reduced by 25 percent that pays off in the long run massively there's a bunch of these that different nations can have access to particularly some of the ones with new focus trees it's just a nice worthy mention also resistance suppression is a continuous focus it's only five percent trust me you're gonna have to there's a lot of other options you could go for that's more worth your time than this one but five percent can be more effective if you're in a really bit of a squeeze and you need to do something to reduce resistance and it will force resistance down five percent globally however there is a cap on a few occupation laws for instance if you are going for brutal oppression you can't seem to get it below the base amount of occupation so it goes minus 75 percent but you'll still have a minimum of 10 percent of trickle of resistance so you can never get it below 10 percent so it only really applies in instances when you're trying to build compliance so just be aware of that but if you are suffering from a lot of damage from garrisons and it's hurting your overall logistics it might be something to think about okay we're going to talk about the what if scenario now of course this is one single battalion however what if you were to add the infamous mps on here which increases the amount of suppression by a fixed 40 percent so for instance if we had military police on here it goes from 2.5 to 3.7 so what is this doing it just reduces the amount of the division overall the amount of manpower and equipment needed to suppress these regions so for instance let's say we add this onto the light tank right now save it and overall here the amount of manpower required has gone from 36k down to 27k and the amount of light tanks has gone from 3.23k to 2.16k so you just need less proportion to maintain the occupation law which in this case is military governor however this is not an effective strategy because now you need infantry equipment and you need support equipment where before you didn't need it before and as you can see that equipment cost has gone up exponentially because it is based on the amount of divisions needed to maintain the occupation law so it is effective now in this instance to make the division bigger so if i were to make this division bigger up to the maximum cap boom all the way 50 width mp light tank boom and then you go into occupation territories and equipment details so we have slashed the amount of manpower needed from 36,000 to 18,000. And the amount of guns now and support equipment is basically nothing because remember it's proportional based on the amount needed as a part of the division and the problem is with support companies they don't scale based upon that i'll be honest with you this takes a lot of people to get the mind to wrap around but just understand from my perspective that the divisions i'm showing you are the most cost effective and they are more effective at keeping the resistance down without hurting your logistics believe me so just to confirm you don't need mp on until you start making the division bigger like this okay uh, for instance this division this one is just effective as if it was one light tank battalion because remember they are proportional based on the amount needed to to maintain the occupation law so it will scale depending on how many you need however the one exception to that rule is mp okay there is one other thing that i've missed and this is something that was added in the latest expansion it's a little bit of a secret easter egg if you look under people's army when you add military police on it gives a bonus to suppression for each horse cavalry battalion this is such a weird scenario this because the doctrine of mass mobilization is the chinese one so when a chinese needs to deal with resistance they're technically not because it's all their core territory so there won't be any resistance this is a bit of a weird one but it exists it's a thing so for every division that has mp on and has a horse battalion you get an additional 0.5 suppression so let's look at the numbers here so we're going to go from two suppression we add the horse on and now it's up to three okay interesting compared to armored cars which go to 3.7 so 3.7 versus three it doesn't feel like he's adding it on so you're gaining 40 percent from the mp plus you're meant to be gaining a flat amount per cavalry division so will this scale so potentially will be going for the big division overall be effective 
We're going to find out, boys. So we're going to basically run the best light tank resistance. This one versus basically when I fill, fill this out, the re biggest resistance. Noteworthy, proper heritage. If you go for this, this will save you a massive amount for making a big cavalry division because it means making cavalry divisions free. So now when I make this and I expand it, cavalry is now free. So if you ever want to do the one division trick, which is significantly less effective than it ever has been before, you can do this on the cheap by going for proper heritage, the officer core, and then making a massive horse. And you're not restricted to proper heritage behind a doctrine. You can go for it for anyone you've gone for. All right, let's look at the numbers. So the suppression of this division is 75 versus 93.7. But we already know which is the winner here. We already know what the winner is. But let's just see the numbers anyway. So right now, this is the light tank one. And then we change it to the horse. What's the difference? So you're going to go from 18k manpower to 45. And from 57 guns to 5.7k. What? Well, it's a bonus to horses, I guess. I guess. But, but not really effective enough compared to the meta which is this. I'm so underwhelmed by this. I was expecting this horse to be really OP, but it's not. I want to compare this to a different nation that hasn't got the mass mobilization thing. Let's just tag over to the Soviet Union. We're going to do proper heritage again. We're going to max out our MP. We don't have the doctrine. No, we don't have it. Yeah, that's good. So instead of 75 suppression, we're going to see what the difference is because I think the game might be bugged and not showing the full numbers. I need to unlock some more doctrines to fill up the slots fill up all the horses the final row it's bugged it's bugged i have a feeling this would be the matter if it wasn't bugged so we gain 75 suppression without this and with it 75 suppression it's bugged oh, i'm so disappointed i'm so disappointed oh no so what if i research it now maybe maybe i can act somehow activate it We've gone for it now by researching it, by not cheating it in. And it's still 75 suppression. I'm going to be totally real with you guys. I think this is the meta. And this is the most effective template possible if you go for the mass mobilization doctrine. However, the stats aren't showing and they're not having an impact. So stick with the light tank. <laughs> what a surprise ending. Anyway, I hope you understand now how garrisons work. And I've showed you the best possible garrisons in the game. So I hope that helps you and makes you a better gamer. Anything that I missed, please let in the comments below. If you want more of this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if this is the next video for you, give this one a click. I'll see you later.